Alrighty, guys. So let's uh, get started with number one. So I want you guys to just take a look at number one really quickly, okay? Now, um, a big part of AP, the AP Chem test is being able to uh, use the contents that we content that we learned in class and just apply it to these new situations. So I want you guys to just read this question real quick and take like a minute just to kind of think about it. If you need to draw a picture um, just to uh, visualize what's going on, you can. Uh, but take a second to do that, okay? A minute just to read the problem, read through the answers, Okay. If you think you got the answer, you can write the answer down, but take a second just to reflect on it and just really understand what's going on. Alrighty guys, so hopefully you're able to kind of just think about that very briefly and hopefully you understand what's going on. Um, but let's uh, go over this problem together, okay? So I'm gonna just draw some things on the side just so that we can visualize it. So basically it's saying that there's two containers of gas. Um, one of them contains four, 14 grams of nitrogen. It says they're flexible, so I'm just say that they're a balloon. Again, you don't need to draw exactly what I draw. Um, but we have one container that has 14 grams of nitrogen. And then you have another container. And this one contains 22 grams of carbon dioxide, okay? And based on that information, we need to figure out which one of these things is true, okay? Now, um, for this one, we're going to be using that handout I just passed out. Do you guys all have that handout I just passed out? It should say like AP Chemistry Equations and Constants, this one right here. Yours looks a little bit different than mine, but it has the same equations on it. Um, so this is the equation sheet that's going to be given to you on the AP Chem test. So this actually contains everything you'll need to take the test. And so since we're talking about gases in this unit, let's take a look at the gas portion of the equation sheet, okay? This, will, this is what we'll be using to solve out this problem. Okay, yeah, oh, my bad. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the options and we need to figure out which one is true, okay? So let's just start with the first one. The first one says the volume of the CO2 container mix is the same as the volume of the nitrogen container, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the equation sheet real quick. And let's just take a look at it and see uh, what information it has about uh, volume, OK? So we have the PV equals NRT equation. Um, it looks like we have uh, the gas constant. That has liters in it, kind of. Uh, but we also have this right here, ideal gas at STP, OK, 22.4 liters per mole. Do you guys see anything else with liters or volume inside this equation sheet? No, right? It's pretty much just the ideal gas law and the ideal gas at STP. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this form and I'm just going to write down the two equations um, that we could possibly use. We have PV equals NRT and then we also have 22.4 liters per mole. Okay, so this option right here says the volume of the CO2, the CO2 container is the same as the volume of the nitrogen container. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see, let's test that to see if it's true. Okay, so between these two equations, what do you guys think is going to be the better equation to use um, in order to test answer number A? You guys think it's ideal gas law or this second conversion right here? 
So let's look at the ideal gas law. In order to solve the ideal gas law, what do we need? We need pressure. Got to look at volume. We need moles and temperature. Do we have anything about pressure or temperature in this problem? No, right? It doesn't even tell us if it's e they're in the same condition or it says that the same temperature and pressure. So technically, we could use this. We can just make the same assumptions. But I personally think it's a lot easier just to use this um, because if we just use this, what we can do is we can take the 14 grams of nitrogen, right? And then we can use molar mass to turn it into moles. Nitrogen, oh, it's N2 gas, sorry. N2 gas is uh, 28 grams per mole. Okay, and then we can turn the one mole into liters with the conversion right here, 22.4 liters. Okay, yeah, what's up, great. Yeah, the 22.4 liters per mole, if you uh, take a look at the, the equation sheet, it should be at the bottom right of uh, the gases, liquids, and solutions portion. This one's a little bit different than yours, but you should have 22.4. They not. They don't have twenty two point four. Okay, I guess you guys got to memorize it. This one's from twenty twenty, so yeah, you guys can just write that on your form then. Write twenty two point four uh, liters per mole. Sorry about that. I thought it would be on there. Well, I guess you guys got to memorize that then. Unfortunately. Thank you, great. So, so blunder on my part. Okay, so what we can do is we get, we can use that conversion. And so we'll take 14 divided by 28 times 22.4. And that tells us that we have about 11.2 liters of N2, okay? Now try the same with uh, CO2 and see if uh, you guys can turn it or see, see uh, what the volume of CO2 is. Okay, so take a second to try that out. There is something I'll, I'll get I'll get to you in a sec. Give me like two minutes. Senior what? Do you need to go? It's like optional. I could go. Go ahead. If you want to check it out. I'm gonna check it out. Okay. Yeah. What do you uh, I'll tell you later. It's just organizing some stuff. Is there less I can do it right now? It's just glassware. But I gotta give you some instruction, so it's okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. Go do it. Alrighty guys, so if you guys are finishing up, feel free to finish up, but this is the uh, equation that you should have ended up with. You, we got 22 grams of CO2. The molar mass of CO2 is 44. We're gonna multiply by that, that by 22.4, and we're gonna end up with the same volume of, uh, what is it, of CO2, okay? So is number, or it, A would be the correct answer to this problem. Okay, we didn't even have to look at any of the other ones. Uh, the volume of the CO2 container is the same as the volume of the nitrogen gas container, okay? And we found that using uh, this conversion right here. We could have done PV equals NRT, um, but then we would have to kind of just substitute um, some other constants for P and T. So I think it's easier to use the 22.4, okay? All right, and then because we know that, we can also verify if the other ones are true or not. Number of molecules of carbon dioxide is greater than the number of molecules of nitrogen. Well, that's obviously not going to be true because um, if they have the same volume, that means we have the same number of moles. This is 0.5 moles of N2, and this is 0 0.5 moles of CO2. So if we have the same number of moles, that means we have the same number of molecules. Uh, the density is going to be different because we know that density 
um, has to do with the molar mass, right? Density is mass over volume. Since they have different masses, that means the density is not going to be right. Um, since they're at the same temperature, they can't have uh, different kinetic energies because kinetic energy is directly in proportion to the temperature. So that's not going to be right. And then the speed, um, we know from early, we learned earlier in the unit that the speed, the velocity um, is going to be different because if they're at the same temperature, the bigger gas has to move faster. Okay. So that means that the speed, this is also not going to be correct. Okay. All right. Any questions? So that's pretty much how you would go through it. Obviously, we spent a lot more time than we needed to on this problem, but that's kind of the thought process that you guys want to go through um, as you guys solve these problems. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to number two. And again, if you, if um, you finish these questions earlier than we do, you can just kind of move at your own pace. So if you want to make this kind of a self-study session, you can do that as well. Okay. So for number two, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to take a look at the problem and I want to, I want you guys to take out all of the information that you guys see in there. Okay. And see if you guys can uh, find an equation on the handout that we might use in order to solve this problem. So go ahead and try that out. You can round it up to one if you want to. Okay. If you want to be like super specific and careful, you can, but I've never run into a problem where using eight two one messed me up that much. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so this is the information that I pulled out. Again, if you guys are finishing up, feel free to finish up. Um, but I, I pulled out that it's uh, 0 0.01 moles of NO2. Uh, temperature one is 127 degrees Celsius. Uh, pressure is 2.5 ATM or P1 is 2.5 ATM. Um, we know that it's T2 because it's a different temperature. So it changes to 27 degrees Celsius. The volume stays constant and the question is asking us to find the second pressure, the new pressure. Okay. Any questions on where I got this information? Okay, so we got a lot of info here. Um, and so some of this is unnecessary. So our job is to figure out which, what information we need in order to figure out which gas law that we use. Okay, so let's take a look at um, the, the values that we pulled out. We said that uh, the temperature changes, right? Okay, but it looks like the volume stays constant and the moles stay constant. Okay, if you guys take a look at your notes, you guys remember 
which gas law we would use for this problem where we uh, find the new pressure based on the temperature change. What was that? The gas law. So it's not on, this one's not going to be on your handout. You're going to have to know those gas laws. Uh, just memorize them for the exam, for the AP Chem exam. So you guys might need to go back to your notes for this one. Um, it's not on your hand though. It, he does have a weird name. It's a two-part name. Do you guys remember? McKay. Not McKay, huh? Gay yeah, Gay Lussac or Guy Lussac. Gay. It's French. I don't speak French, but I say Gay Lussac because I just read it the way that I normally read English. Okay, so yeah, it's Gay Lussac's law, which means that it's P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Okay. Ah, oh, bless you. So all we need to do is just plug in the numbers that we have. P1, the first pressure is 2.5 atm divided by T1. Can I plug in 127? No, what do I need to do? Yeah, I gotta change the Kelvin. Make sure you guys are careful about that. For the temperatures, you have to change both of them into Kelvin, okay? It's tricky because especially when you're under pressure, you're trying to work fast, it's very easy to just forget and just put in the numbers, okay? I still make that mistake and I've been doing this for too long, okay, so. For T1, you should get 400 Kelvin. Looking for P2. And then you should get 300 Kelvin for T2, okay? So I'll give you guys maybe 30 seconds to solve out for P2, and then you guys can circle the correct answer. All right, so hopefully you guys were able to calculate that out. You just do 2.5 divided by 400 times 300, and that should give you 1.875. So the correct answer to this problem will be E, 1.88. That's the closest. Any questions? All right, so for this problem, what I want to show you guys is that for the gas loss, um, you don't need to use all the constants. So if you guys want to write this down somewhere, um, you guys can, but I'm going to give you the, I guess, the equation that has all the gas laws combined together, um, but you don't have to use everything inside of it, okay? So if you want to write this down somewhere, you can do it. And if you memorize this one, it'll give you all the gas laws that we've learned in one place, okay? So it's P1, V1 over T1, N1, which is equal to P2, V2 over T2, N2, okay? So I'll break that down in a second, but uh, if you guys just wanna write that down somewhere, um, and this could be the one that you memorize, and from there, you can actually pull out every single gas law that we've learned in this unit, except the ideal gas law, um, but you can pull them all out of there. Actually, I guess you could pull out the ideal gas law from here as well. Okay, so if you guys take a look at this gas law, we'll kind of call this the combined gas law. Okay, we can actually pull out every single other gas law we've learned. So if I just want to find pressure and volume, I can just take out pressure and volume and we'll, we can get P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Okay, and this is Boyle's law. Everyone see that? It's just not the stuff on the top. Okay, if I wanted to just look at pressure and temperature like I did in this previous problem, I could take pressure and temperature, pressure and temperature, and then we can get P1, T1 equals P2 over T2. 
And like we just said, that's uh, Gay Lussac's law. Okay. We can also uh, take out volume and temperature. We can take volume and temperature here, volume and temperature here to get, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. It's like a machine gun. Okay. And so uh, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And this one is Charles' law. Sorry, these guys all have apostrophe. Okay, do you guys see that? We can get all of the gas laws from this combined gas law. And then last but not least, if we wanted to get Avocado's law, I mean Avogadro's law. Yeah, that's what I want to be. Dude, I want, yo, I want guacamole so bad right now. Anyway, um, sorry, I lost track of what, what we were talking about. Uh, oh, volume, <laughs> thank you, volume and moles. So we can get V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. And this is Avogadro's law. Okay, so every single one of the gas laws we learned, and you guys can go back and double check it for me, but you guys can actually get every single one of the gas laws from this gas law right here. And if we really wanted to get fancy with it, we can take one side. And then if we want to rearrange the equation, it will end up to becoming PV equals NRT you can just replace, put the N and the T on the other side. Okay, but that's a little, get, little bit more advanced, so you can just memorize this for the gas laws, okay? All right, any questions? Okay, so we're gonna be doing a couple more problems, but if anybody is going ahead, or if you guys wanna do this at home, there are two problems that you don't know how to do on this, uh, on this file. So if you guys uh, wanna write this down or try this out later at home, uh, make sure you guys skip number five and 17 in this packet. You guys don't know how to do that yet. Okay, number five, yeah, number five and 17 are impossible for you guys right now. I haven't taught you guys uh, the skill that you guys need in order to solve those. So if you guys were going ahead, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier, but number five and 17, you can't do yet. All righty, let's move on. Let's go to number three, okay? So um, in number three, it says that we have a hydrocarbon gas with the empirical formula CH2. It has a density of 1.3 grams per liter at one degree Celsius and one ATM. Okay, and we need to find the, uh, the real formula. Now, I want to do this problem with you guys because I want to point out one important thing. If you ever see a gas at zero degrees Celsius and one ATM, does anyone remember? Okay, yeah, STP, standard temperature pressure. So if you guys ever see zero degrees Celsius and one ATM, or if you see uh, 273 Kelvin and one ATM, you should automatically know, hey, this is going to be at STP, okay? And it's important that we establish something is at STP because if we know STP, we can use this conversion factor, one mole, is 22.4 liters, okay? And this makes your life a lot easier when you solve any gas law problem because you automatically have a connection from moles to volume, okay? So just make sure you guys uh, keep that in mind. If you ever see a gas at zero degrees Celsius and one ATM, you should automatically see, hey, this is at STP, I might need to use the one mole is 22.4 liters conversion. Okay, and we are going to be using that one because if you guys take a look at this problem, it tells you the empirical formula is CH2, and, but the density of the gas is 1.3 grams per liter. Okay, it's asking you to find the formula of the actual hydrocarbon. Okay, if we're looking for the formula Something that's very helpful is to know, hey, what's the molar mass of this gas that we're looking at? Okay, and do you guys remember what the units of measurement for molar mass is? It's mo it has moles in it, but molar mass. Moles per, yeah, something else. I heard it. Yeah, grams, it's grams per mole. So if you guys look at this, there's grams, right? So I would wanna get rid of liters. And what do I want at the bottom of the fraction? Moles, 
because I want to turn it into grams per mole. Because if I find grams per mole, I can figure out which one of these guys is the real gas we're looking at. Okay, and that's why STP is so helpful because if we didn't have this conversion, dude, this would be such a, this would be impossible to figure out. And so all we need to do is plug in the numbers right here. We know that 22.4 liters is equal to one mole. The liters will cancel out and that will give us grams per mole. Okay. So I'm gonna give you guys two minutes. You can work with the person next to you. Um, I want you guys to finish up that equation and I want you to figure out which one of these chemicals right here, A, B, C, D, or E, is the, chemi the, uh, the real formula of the hydrocarbon gas we're looking at, okay? So to say, take a second to try that out. Alrighty guys, so hopefully you're able to figure out that it's B. Um, if you guys solve out this equation, you should get 29.12 grams per mole. Um, and if you just kind of go down the line and find the molar masses, uh, CH2 is 14 plus two. Oh, oh wait, sorry, 12 plus two, which is 14. Um, C2H4 though, is gonna be two 12s for the carbon, which is 24. And then there's uh, four, dude, am I? unable to count dude what's wrong with me um <laughs> it's gonna be four for the hydrogens which will get you to 28 which is the closest to 29.12 sorry guys i'm still waking up too okay all righty any questions yeah, pete's looking at me like dude mr was so dumb which is true it's very true could not do 24 plus four all right, um, let's uh, move on to the next question, number four. Okay, so I did mention this very briefly during the lecture, but I wanted to go over it because this is very important uh, for figuring out these more conceptual problems in gas laws where we don't do any math. Okay, it says a gas, a real gas would uh, act most ideal at. So if you guys remember, this entire unit is based on the idea that gases act ideally, okay? Now, this is the thing that we need to remember about an ideal gas. Ideal, ga ideal gases are not real, okay? Real gases operate differently depending on the temperature and the pressure, okay? But an ideal gas, we have different um, assumptions about the gas. The first uh, assumption is that they are not close to one another. Okay, so they're not close to other gas molecules. Okay, so basically we're assuming that the molecules are not bumping into each other. They're not chemically reacting with one another. They're just kind of far away from one another. Okay, the second assumption is that the gas molecules are moving quickly. They're moving very fast. Okay, these are the two assumptions that we make about ideal gases. Again, this doesn't happen in real life because in real life, by changing the temperature and the pressure, we can make a gas work, um, what is it, operate differently. 
Okay, but for the purposes of this class, we are going to be talking about ideal gases. And so in an ideal gas, we assume that the gas molecules are not close to other gas molecules and that they're moving very quickly. Okay, so in this problem, and you'll actually see some of these questions on your exam for this class and for the AP test, um, it's going to be asking about the difference between a real gas and an ideal gas. Okay, so these are the two assumptions. And before we even take a look at this, let's just kind of think about what properties of gases these uh, two assumptions talk about. So the properties we've talked about are pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. Okay, so anyone want to take a shot at it? Uh, one of these properties, which one of these rules does one of the properties apply to? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, which one of these is temperature? One or two? Two, yeah, so good. This one has to do with temperature. So if it's moving quickly, is it a high temperature or is it a low temperature? Yeah, high temperature, good pickup guys. Okay, so one of the ways you can think about it is in an ideal gas, we are looking at a high temperature. Okay, good. That's temperature, good pickup. All right, what about number one? If it's not close to other gases, what do you guys think um, it has to do with? Pressure, volume, or moles? So I'm hearing moles and volume. Anyone think pressure? Yes, what's up? Yes, it is actually pressure, guys. Good explanation. So if we think about pressure, pressure is what? Gas molecules bouncing off of something, right? And so get the gas molecules can bounce off the walls of the container, but what else can they bounce off of? Each other. And so if the pressure is low, they're not bouncing off of things very much. And so that means that in, in an ideal gas, we have a low pressure and we have a high temperature okay this is something you just kind of have to memorize um the two assumptions that they give you in the book are these but i think it's easier to memorize it as low pressure high temperature so there you go that's how we derive those two things all right so if we take a look at um this problem the options for our answers um let's kind of just go through them and figure out which ones we can automatically eliminate Okay, what's one of the options we can automatically eliminate? You can just yell it out. Okay, A, yeah, why can we eliminate A? Yeah, yeah, pretty low temperature, right? So actually, with that assumption, we can get rid of all of the 273. So we have B and D. They're, the, they're pretty much the same temperature, but which one should we go with? D, yeah, because of the low pressure. Good job, guys. Easy peasy, right? Genius. Good call on the pressure, yeah. So in an ideal gas, um, just remember, we assume low pressure, high temperature, because remember, volume has to do with the container that it's inside of. Doesn't matter what kind of container we put it into. Um, N has to do with moles, how much gas there is. We don't really care how much gas there is. We can have a lot, we can have a little. What we care about is the pressure and the temperature. Okay, I'm actually gonna give you guys uh, two minutes. I want you guys to try out number six on your own. Okay, number six um, is just a basic ideal gas law problem. So I kind of told you what equation you wanna use already. You're gonna be using the ideal gas law. It's on your handout. Um, the R values are on there as well. So try number six, give you guys two minutes and then we'll go over it together and then um, we'll move on.
All right, I'll give you guys maybe 30 more seconds, um, and then I'll start going over it. Uh, you don't have to finish. that sound. Alrighty guys, so if you're still finishing, uh, feel free to work on it, um, but I'm going to start going over the problem so we all have the answer, hopefully around the same time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling out everything I have in this problem just so that we have it all in one place to look at, so we don't have to keep reading through it. Um, so we know that for moles, we have 0.33 moles of CaCO3, okay, and it looks like it's a solid, okay, so that means we can't use the gas loss directly on this um, value because it's talking about a solid, not a gas. Okay, it looks like the volume, the container that we put it inside is one liter and then sealed and heated. So we're not getting gas coming in, gas going out. Um, it decomposes completely according to this balanced equation. And so that means at the end of the equation, we don't have any more of the solid. Uh, we only have a CAO solid and CO2 gas. Okay, the total. The total pressure of the flask is what we are looking for. So we're looking for the pressure of the flask at the very end. And the temperature is equal to 300 Kelvin. The gas constant is 0 0.082 uh, liters per liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Okay, so it basically tells us all the information that we need to know. And for um, this part, this is what applies to the gas. We have PV, T, and R, okay? Or we're looking for P. The only thing that we need is the moles of the gas. So it's gonna be moles of CO2, okay? So if we can figure out moles of CO2, that means we can find that, solve for the pressure. Okay. Any questions about how we got there? Hopefully not too bad. Okay, so for uh, this part right here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the moles of CaCO3 and convert it into CO2. Uh, luckily for us, it's just a one-to-one -one conversion. So we can actually use this value. Okay, so 0.33. Okay, so this problem was nice to us, but let's just say, for example, this was like a three here. You would have to do a one-to-three ratio before you could turn it into moles. So just make sure you guys keep an eye out for that. All right, ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. I'm looking for P, so if I rearrange this equation, it'll be NRT divided by V. Just plug and chug from here. So 0.33 moles. I'm gonna plug in 0 0.082 for the gas constant. Uh, we're gonna put 300 Kelvin for the temperature. On the bottom, we're gonna put the volume, which is one liter, okay? So if I pull out my calculator, I can just do 0 0.33 times 0 0.082 times 300, and that'll give me 8.118, which is closest to C, and that's going to be my final answer. Okay. So hopefully you guys were able to get that. Um, if I'm just very honest with you guys, that's a pretty easy problem. 
Um, and so if you guys had difficulty with it, uh, make sure you guys are doing some practice problems at home uh, because just doing a regular ideal gas law problem like that um, should be very easy for you guys by now. It's a simple algebra. It would be a little harder if the balanced equation was like uh, two and three or something like that. Uh, but if you're just plugging in numbers like this, it should be pretty easy to get the answer. Okay, but you do have about a week to study for the exam. So no pressure, but I just want to be completely honest with y'all at this point in the course. All right, any questions? Okay, let's uh, move on to number seven. Number seven. What time is it? All right, so number seven, it says that equal numbers of moles of CO2, N2, and NH3 are placed in a sealed vessel at room temperature, okay? So I'm gonna just draw this real quick. I have a container, and inside of the container, I got CO2, I got N2, and NH3 gas. And it's at room temperature. If the vessel has a pinhole size leak, okay, so that means we have a little tiny leak. Pinhole just means small hole. It just means there's a small leak. Um, it means the gases are probably going to flow out of there. It's very, very small. Okay, then it's asking us which of the following will be true after some of the gas has effused. Effusion, do you guys remember effusion? It's what happens with your butt crack, right? Gases come out of a small hole. So after some effusion has happened. Okay, so we got options one, two, and three. And I want you guys to just try solving this out based on what you guys already know about gases. Um, I'm gonna go over the answer in a sec, but let's uh, kind of go through this. Okay, I'll read the options and you guys can try to figure out if it's true or not. Okay, the, bull, uh, the mole fraction of CO2 in the sample will increase. That means that at one point, after some of the gas comes out, there's gonna be more CO2 than the other ones. Okay, N2 will effuse the fastest since it is the lightest. Okay. Or all gases will effuse at the same rate because the temperature is held constant. Okay. So take about 45 seconds, try to figure out which one of those are true. See if you can get the right answer. If you want to talk with your partner next to you, uh, feel free to do that as well. All right, maybe about 10 more seconds of discussion or just looking at me. All righty guys, so let's uh, go through this. Okay, so um, if you guys remember um, effusion, Okay, it's when gases come out of a small hole. Okay, and honestly, as kind of gross as it is, if you think about how a butthole works, it actually helps you understand effusion very well. Okay, so um, in effusion, okay, the big thing to remember is that the if we if we remember um, or just the way gases move in general, right? We said that kinetic energy it has to be the uh, it has to be similar, it has to be the same when temperature is the same. You guys remember that? Okay, so if it's at the same temperature, it doesn't mean all the gases are moving at the same speed. Because if you guys remember, gases have different sizes, right? Um, some gases are smaller than others. You guys remember this? Okay, some gases are bigger. Uh, we know the size of a gas based on the molar mass. Okay, so if we have a big gas, um, it has to move slower 
in order for it to be at the same temperature, right? Remember that example with the big car and the truck, right? If you have a gas that's the size of a truck, in order to move at the same temperature, have the same kinetic energy, it has to move slower, okay? So what that means is that big gases, they're slower at the same temperature. Okay, so big gases, they move slower when they're at the same temperature as other gases. Okay, so if we take a look at these gases, okay, which one of these gases is the biggest? Yes, CO2. If you guys take a look at the molar mass, it's 44. Nitrogen gas is 28. Uh, and ammonia right here is 17. So that means CO2 is the biggest. Okay. All right. So that means that bigger, that means that the smaller gases, N2 and NH3, are moving faster. And so if we poke a little hole inside of the container, that means that the smaller gases will come out first or later? First, yeah. More of the small gas will come out. It doesn't mean only the small gas will come out. It just means that more of it will come out faster because they're moving at a faster speed, right? And so what that means is that the smaller gases leave first. And this is where I think that uh, butthole analogy really helps because if when you guys go to poo, right, what comes out first, the small gases or the big poop? You usually have a big fart before the poop comes out, right? Okay, or it's just me, my bad. Maybe I'm forcing the analogy, but for me, I don't know about y'all, but when you really got a poo, please don't judge me. You know, there's that big and then the stuff starts coming, the solid stuff starts coming out, right? Yeah. Same thing with gases. The small gases will come out before the big gas. So CO2 is the poo-poo, and then the N2 and NH3 will be the fart. Okay. But again, like a butthole, some of the poo poo will come out. So it could be like a shark, right? So some of the poo can come out with it, but mostly it's going to be the gases. Okay, so this is what we know. Let's go through uh, these three uh, points and see which ones we, uh, we can apply. Okay, so let's start with number two. Okay, because this is the one that we can automatically tell if it's true or false. Okay, it says that N2 will diffuse the fastest since it is the lightest. Is this true? No, N2 is not the lightest. It has a molar mass of 28. That means NH3, yes, yeah, since it's 17, it's the lightest. So this is automatically not true. Okay, what about number three? Will they all effuse at the same rate? No, right? The big one goes slower. So that's not true. Now, before we say, okay, we got number one, that's the only, it is, it is the right answer, okay? But let's, uh, let's just think about this logically. Okay? Why is it the right answer? It's because if N N2 and NH3 leave faster, if this guy leaves slower, that means the percentage of CO2 in there will go down slower than the percentage of N2 and NH3, right? Because if more N2 and NH3 leave than CO2, the proportion or the relative amount of CO2 that's in there will um, get higher compared to the gases in there. So that's why one is the correct answer, okay? okay so hopefully that helped. Hopefully my uh, poop analogy helped as well. But now you guys will know forever that heavier gases come out slower. Methane is 16 CH4. So the flammable stuff moves real quick. H2 uh, is probably the smallest, H2 is the smallest gas, and H2 is very flammable as well. If there's a lot of combustible stuff in the air. Uh, Like, have a room full of flowers. 
Oh yeah, yeah. So um, like you're talking about like sawdust and stuff. Like if there's something that's flammable, but we grind it very fine, a lot of the particles stay in the air. And so if you light a match, if there's a lot of flammable stuff in the air, it goes kaboom. Anyway, guys, I'll give you guys uh, five minutes to kind of recover from my disgusting analogies. Um, and then after that, we'll come back together and then go over the problem. If you guys during this time want to check out your exam or if you guys want to ask me a question about the homework, this would be a good time to do that as well. But I'll give you about five minutes to just hang out and then I will go over problems again. What's up? Yeah, of course. Yes. All right, so let's go to um, the handout again. We are actually going to be skipping very, very far into the future of this uh, handout. And I want you guys to go to number, uh, number 16. Let's go to number 16. Now I'm going over this problem because in, on the AP test, you're going to get questions where they give you the setup. Um, and I want you guys to be able to interpret um, these types of questions, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys two minutes. I want you guys to try this one out on your own, okay? You have all the values given for you in the problem. Um, you just need to make sure you know which equation you need to use, uh, organize the numbers and identify it on the problem. So in this problem, you're actually not solving it out. It's actually forcing you to rearrange the equation so that you guys can figure out uh, what the equation should look like. So a little bit different than what we normally do, um, but sometimes these types of questions do come out on the AP Chem test. So take about two minutes, to work with the person next to you, try solving out number 16, go over it. And I think we have like one or two more questions I want to do today and then we'll be all done. Maybe 30 more seconds to work on it alone. Start going over it about half a minute.
Alrighty guys, so let's start going over this problem. Again, if you're finishing up on your own, feel free to finish up. All right, so in this problem, let's kind of figure out the very the numbers that were given, and then we will uh, see what equation we need to use. So it says a given mass of gas occupies five liters, looks like we have volume, 65 degrees Celsius, so we got temperature, 480 uh, milligram, millimeters of mercury, which looks like pressure. So what's the volume? It's looking for another volume, which means that this is V1 and this is V2 of the gas at 630 millimeters of mercury. It looks like the pressure changed. So this one is P1, this one is P2, and 85 degrees Celsius. So that means the temperature change. So this is P T1 and T2. Okay, so we got P1, V1, T1, and the same for twos. So if you guys remember that combined gas law equation, it's P1, V1 over T1, N1 equals P2, V2 over T2, N2. Now, if you guys take a look at it, we have all these variables except moles. And it says it's a given mass. Um, it looks like the amount of gas we has, have doesn't change. So we can actually get rid of the moles because it's going to stay the same. Okay, and it's asking us to find the volume of the gas, the new volume. So we're going to be looking for V2. Okay, so what we're going to do, it, if you take a look at it, it looks like they're just rearranging all these things. So I'm going to rearrange this equation. I can multiply by T2 on both sides. If I multiply by T2, that means I'll have P1, V1, T2 on the top, right? And then I'm going to divide by uh, P2 so that V2 is isolated. So on the bottom of the fraction, we'll have T1 and we'll have V2. Or so, sorry, P2. Okay, and that's going to equal V2. Any questions about how we rearrange this? You guys good? Okay, so let's just start plugging in the numbers and seeing whether or not they're in the right place for this problem right here, okay? So let's start with V1. V1 is five liters, so that means we have to have five on the top of the fraction. Well, lucky for us, it all has five on the top of the fraction, okay? So we're good to go. So five has to be on the top of the fraction. All right, so we're done with that. Okay, let's go to T1. T1 is 65 degrees Celsius. And so we need to convert that into Kelvin. So if we convert that into Kelvin, we should get 338 Kelvin. Now, does T1 go on the top of the fraction or the bottom of the fraction? According to our rearranged formula. Bottom. Yeah, bottom. T1 is on the bottom. That means that in this, uh, you know, in, in our answer somewhere, we need to put 338 on the bottom. So let's just go through this and see if we have a 338 on the top or the bottom, okay? So here, it looks like they just plugged it in as Celsius, so that means this is done incorrectly. This person did not convert to Kelvin, so we don't do A. 338 is on the bottom. Here, it's on the top, so we can cross this guy out. And then this one right here, 338 is on the top. So we got rid of three of the answers just by putting T1 in the correct place. So we're done with T1. Now let's look at uh, P1. P1 is 480. Does 480 go on the top or on the bottom? Yeah, top right here, P1, good job. So that means 480 goes on the top. So if we take a look at this, we have 480 on the top, 480 on the bottom. So we don't even need to solve the rest of the question. We already know the answer is C, okay? And you don't have to finish it up because we already have the answer. Oh, already. All righty, any questions, guys? Okay, so I do want to go over one final question with y'all. It's going to be a gas stoichiometry problem, um, but I want to go over it so that you guys had a little bit of practice before we uh, finish up for today. Okay, let's go to number 36. Number 36. I'll leave this up here for a second, but we're going to be doing number 36.
All right. So if we take a look at number 36, it says that a sample of 18 grams of aluminum metal is added to excess hydrochloric acid. So that means we have aluminum metal and we're reacting it with HCl. Now for our numbers, uh, we have 18 grams of aluminum and then we have excess HCl. Okay, and it says a volume of H hydrogen gas is produced. Okay, hydrogen gas is H2. And so that means we have to put aluminum and chlorine next to combine it. But since aluminum's MCI is plus three and Cl is minus one, we're gonna need three chlorines to balance out the aluminum. Okay. So that's how we finish the equation. It tells us that hydrogen gas is produced. And so that means that aluminum and chlorine need to react. Okay, so I'm gonna balance this for you guys since the balancing is actually a pain. So it's two, six, three, and two. And it looks like we are looking for the volume of H2 gas that's produced. That's what we're looking for. And if you guys take a look at this, it says it's zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. What does that tell us? Yeah, it's STP. And if we have STP, what does that tell us about the volume? Wow, yeah, 22.4 liters per mole. Okay, so we can solve for the volume of hydrogen gas. So I'm going to give you guys two minutes to see if you guys can set up that gas stoichiometry problem. Um, you are looking for the volume of H2 gas. We start with 18 grams of aluminum. We have the balanced equation and the STP conversion for volume. Let's take about two minutes. See if you, you can solve that out. You can work with the person next to you. And then after that, we'll go over it and we'll be done. Hello. So I don't think I could in the time needed. We're going to do one more day of, we're just going to do the same script, maybe one more day of molarity. They don't get it. Oh, okay. Like yeah. as a group. I'm doing molarity review next time, too. So I'm, but I'm going to do one more day tomorrow. Send them a handout. Yeah. It's very difficult, but they just need to do problem after problem after oh, problem sure. just to start seeing molarity times liters. But yeah, they're struggling on it, which could be bad that I cater to them not getting it instead of just moving on. Yeah. No, but uh, you're meeting them where they where they are. Okay. Hopefully, it yields good results. Yeah. I do want this a bunch of gas law practice. Oh, good. Online. Yeah, it's on the it's on campus. Nice. Oh, I don't even look at campus. No, <laughs> just oh, the God. drive. Oh, you're just, oh, yeah. I looked at the drive, or I just, yeah. yeah. It's just, I think for uh, this course, my canvas is so much more organized than your than, drive. Than my drive. Yeah, your yeah. drive is just like, like, boom, choof. Yeah. Hey, here's a, instead of having it organized by unit. By unit, yeah. It's I don't know by, if you're going to change that or not. No, I'm going to keep it by uh, type. Uh, Correct. Yeah. File. And you like it like that. Yeah. I mean, it all depends on, on your own, yeah, how you set it up. Different. I kind of like it that way. Mm. Because you said so, so then if I'm like, I just want to look at the text, all your yeah. text is together. But I almost want to have, I want to have text, tests. Yeah, yeah. But then I also want to have unit one, and those things will be in unit one. So yeah. it's like doubled up. You would have places. to yeah, set up a second. Yeah. But just another folder that then everything from unit one is in there. So yeah. that's what I've done for my unit four. Yeah, for sure. Is I've set up. All my all the paperwork I'm doing with big miss, which is a lot. Uh huh. I'm adding it to the uh. All righty, guys, let's wrap it up and then we'll be all done. So uh, if you're still finishing it up, feel free to finish up on your own, but let's get started. So our starting number is 18 grams of aluminum. We got to turn it into moles. The molar mass of aluminum is 27 grams per mole. So 27 grams of aluminum per one mole of aluminum. Okay, next we're gonna set up a fraction where we get rid of moles of aluminum. And to do that and turn it into moles of hydrogen gas, we need to get the numbers from the balanced equation. So on the top, we'll have three 
the bottom will have two. And then last but not least, we know that one mole of hydrogen gas is going to be equal to 22.4 liters. And that is going to be our stoichiometry equation that we can use um, to solve for this problem. So after that, just plug and chug into the calculator. 18 divided by 27 times 3 divided by 2 times 22.4. And you should get 22.4. Okay, I know, nice, easy way to end that problem, right? And so our answer is going to be C. All right, so that's gas stoichiometry. Um, we will be actually combining that with solution stoichiometry next time I see you guys, since I know you guys love stoic. But that's it from me today. If you guys want to review this information, it's uh, going to be posted on Canvas or the YouTube page. And then the... If you guys want to work on the rest of this handout on your own to get some practice, the answers are on the bottom of the file. So you guys can check that out as well. Okay. Have a good one, guys.